What's up? In this video, I'll take you step by step through the process of using artificial intelligence to create a 3D model. No experience required. Let's get started. So the first step of this simple process is to go to blender.org. This is the platform where our 3D modeling program will be available for the free and open source program. You don't have to worry about paying at all. You just go right to download and download Blender. This will start your installation package. I've already got it downloaded. This is the last step to get Blender on your computer. And then we go to OpenAI. This is where we find our language model tool called ChatGPT3. So this is the OpenAI website. And look at this, introducing ChatGPT. Go ahead and click Try. This opens up another window where I already have an account. You can see our prompt window where we would type in and ask the AI for questions, and even previous conversations that I've had with the AI since I've got my saved account. I can go down here and clear conversations, but I'm saving them. Okay, so I've got Blender downloaded on my computer, I've got Blender open on the right, and ChatGPT open on the left. You can see when Blender opens, it gives us our default opening screen with a few different options. I'll just click off of this. And if when I use the scroll wheel to pivot around my scene, I can see that there's a default cube, a default light, and a default camera. We don't actually need any of these items in the scene, so we could press A to select all of them, or box select. So A, and then X to delete. X. So now we've got nothing in our 3D viewport. Now we're going to go from our layout workspace over to our scripting workspace. And this will be where we can type in our code from ChatGPT. And this will affect and inform our model. So in this text editor here, I'm going to open up new. So this is where we actually will be able to write lines of code. So let's test ChatGPT and see what it can do in Blender. So a few things to note on my first comment. I wrote Blender Python here. Python is the language that Blender is coded in and what you'll be using to interact with the text editor here. So any code we need from ChatGPT needs to be written in the correct Python syntax. You can see it's ri written the code over here in what appears to be the correct syntax. This is pretty amazing. You can see that ChatGPT is writing our code and annotating it for us so we know what's happening in each step. Pretty cool. So all we need to do is copy this code, go over to our text editor in Blender, right-click, paste, or Control-V, and then we need to run our script. We can press Alt-P to run our script, or hit this little play button over here, and we'll see if it places 30 spheres randomly. Well, we've got one sphere, and it appears to be randomly placed. Maybe if I run my script again, let's see. So it's just the attribute error in the number of spheres is incorrect. You can see the ChatGPT got the code a little wrong, but it is placing one sphere randomly every time I play this code. Pretty interesting. Let's see if we can make the 3D model dynamic and animate it. See if we can animate our spheres to spin around the origin point of our scene. Now one thing I think ChatGPT cannot do very well is apply or edit materials. So that's something you may have to do on your own. If we were to go into our rendered view, for example, all of our cubes are the same exact material. So you would have to select a cube and then go down to your materials, create a new material. So when I click new, it gives me all these material options. Really all I care about for this is the color. So I could go to another object, go down to material properties, new, click on the base color and select a different color. 
So we can see ChatGPT wrote a pretty long script here. It's doing a lot of math and a lot of calculating. I assume this is not going to be correct the first time. Let's see. I'll go ahead and delete my other script. Paste. And run. See in line 17, we got an error, error about the transform. This isn't really... XYZ wouldn't be correct. So we ran the script and there were no errors. So to see if this animated our model, we could go to our header here and right click, horizontal split. So now we're adding another window into our Blender scene. So in this window, we could go to our editor type and change what it is. We want a timeline. Look at that. Our spheres are actually rotating. If I go to wireframe view so you can see all of the edges and vertices. Pretty interesting, right? Just got AI to place these spheres randomly, to set each of them as their own origin for rotation. And they're even rotating randomly. You can see that there isn't a normal pattern to this. They're rotating completely randomly, all in sync, but the actual pattern of rotation does not follow a solid a set path. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't have been able to write this code that fast. That took less than a minute. If we wanted to make this more obvious, I could select my object, my ball for example, and hit tab to go into edit mode, and then hit three to go to face select mode. Select a few faces while holding shift to select multiple, or I could hold alt shift and select a ring, a loop. Easy way to select a lot of surfaces on your object and then create a new material. Change the color of this to red, for example. I've still got all of those faces selected, so I'll click Assign. Select my sphere. Now when we play our animation, it's much more obvious that spinning effect. Let's see if we can make it more complex. So ChatGPT is written in this set Euler rotation, which we actually don't need. I'll be deleting this out of the text again. So to break down a little bit what ChatGPT is doing for us, in Blender you import modules. So you import Blender Python and you import math. You could import random, etc. at the start of your script and it tells Python to reach into those depositories and find that data, we'll work with that. So we've imported BPY, import math, and we're using that math, for example, down in calculating our rotation values and calculating the... Okay, let's see if we can go in and copy the code. I'll delete this other code first. Paste. And let's see if we get that error on line 17 again. Line 17, trace back error. So I'll just delete those two and run it again. Look at that, no error. Nice. So if I use the scroll wheel on my mouse to pivot around my scene, can see that the sphere is indeed moving in a circle. If I look directly down on my model, hitting 7 on the number pad, see that it's moving around in a circle and rotating randomly while that's happening. Pretty cool. I would not have been able to type this code as fast as ChatGPT did. It has got me beat. If I knew that I needed a simple animating object, I would always turn to ChatGPT to code it for me, as opposed to physically modeling it in the scene. So this might seem like nothing, this may not seem incredibly powerful, but what we've done here is not just create a 3D model, this is a data-rich object, which every parameter is being controlled by our script. We could go in and change 
everything about the movement, everything about the rotation, just by editing our script a little bit and messing around. If I went to change this to 8, for example, and ran my script. Now looking at it from above, we can see that I've changed my radius from 10 width to 5 length. So it's going farther along our x-axis than our y-axis. So you can actually manipulate the movement of the object after you've got your script in here just by changing a number and rerunning the script. Pretty cool. Speaking of scripting, here's a little pro tip I've got for you. If you open up Blender and set the same settings every time, for example, when I open Blender, I often will go to my render engine, choose Cycles, GPU Compute, and change my max samples a little bit just when I'm starting rendering. So you can see I've got all of these down here in the info panel. See if I click my panel control, info panel. So these happen down here where I turned on my cycles, turned down GPU compute, and 3000 frames. So I can select these lines of code, copy, and go up into my text editor and paste. So we can see if, I, if we import Blender Python and then run this script here, I'll turn off my EV, text, run script, and it turned on cycles and GPU compute, set my samples. So this is a major time saver here. All we have to do is go to text, save as, and this saves as a text file that we can open up then, text open, and this will start up our scene for us right away without having to click on any items at all. Major time saver. And that concludes today's tutorial. I hope you're enjoying this kind of content. If you are, be sure to let me know in the comments, subscribe to my channel, and check it regularly because I've got more coming on the horizon. See ya!